Thanks for joining us for a special edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And right here, you'll see this beautiful vista behind me. Above us, we have Goldfield and below us, the Wasp Mine. And well, today we're, uh, we're gonna be talking to a special person on the show here, Clay Wurst, who knows all about this area. As a matter of fact, he is the owner of the Wasp Mine and he's gonna tell us about the Goldfield Mining District. Clay? Well, Goldfield actually came on kind of late. You know, there was a, quite a bit of mining exploration in the Arizona Territory in the 60s, 70s, 80s. It was about 1890 before anything really happened out here at Goldfield. And initially, it was a group of Mormons, Merrill, Hakes, and Kozner, filed on a bunch of claims here at Goldfield. And they had some gold, but they didn't have the means really to develop it. So they gave a purchase option to Charles Hall and Dennis Sullivan out of Denver, experienced mining men. And this was weird. They had no sooner given that purchase option than they had a cloud burst up Goldfield Wash and a huge flash flood came down the wash and where it crossed the mammoth fault contact, it scoured the gravel out of the, uh, down to bedrock and the bedrock was laced with beautiful wire gold. And they had already optioned it to Hall and Sullivan who exercised the option immediately. Well, the first thing they had to do to mine it was build a diversion dam to divert Goldfield Wash to the west around the mining operation, and they sunk a shaft on it. They got down about 100 feet and hit a tremendously rich ore deposit that they started to work out. They called it the Mormon Stope. And they had taken out, oh, about 28,000 ounces of gold. Now, Gold back in those days, that was $20.67 an ounce, and the 67 cents used up in, in refining fees, so call it $20 gold. That 28,000 ounces today would be worth $35 million. Well, the same fate that created the mammoth mine destroyed it. There was another flash flood. It washed out the dam. It flooded Goldfield. It collapsed the Mormon Stope. And they lost probably $5 million that they had blocked out in the Mormon Stope when it collapsed. So they shut that down. They moved south down the... Everything here at Goldfield is on the Mammoth Fault Contact. It runs about 4,000 feet here. They moved south on the Mammoth Claim to what they called the Glory Hole. And they pulled quite a bit of gold out of that. And one of the, the so-called records is that they all told pulled out 105,000 ounces of gold out of the Mammoth. That's $130 million today, today's market. Well, they shut it down. Goldfield became a ghost town until 1909. When George U. Young, who was the territorial secretary for Arizona Territory, bought out, Hall had died, bought out the mammoth group from Hall's heirs. But Young had a different approach to it. Hall and Sullivan, were simply following extremely high-grade veins. Young had the idea of rather than doing that, but uh, exploring a large body of lower-grade ore that could be worked open pit and take everything, blood, guts, and feathers, and do a heap leach. Well, in the process of trying to block out this ore body, Young put, ended up with over three miles of underground workings down to the thousand foot level. And this was basically between 1913 and 1923. Well, just in exploration by today's prices, they took out two and a half million. 
And there was more than just what they had on the mammoth. From the mammoth claim running north, you've got the mammoth, the tom thumb, and the black queen. There was quite a bit of work done on the black queen. In fact, they had a, a huge power plant, uh, a steam power generating plant here at the mammoth. They actually ran a high voltage transmission line up to the Black Queen, put in a substation up there for the work done on the Black Queen. And there was a, a number of shafts put down there. But the Black Queen never developed a large major ore deposit like the Mammoth did. It was smaller veins of extremely high grade ore, but very small veins. And the Black Queen never really amounted to that much in the pioneer era. Now there's development work going up on the Black Queen today, and I certainly wish them well. They may be able to do something with it. But at any rate, when George U. Young failed to develop a big open pit here, and it could never be done today. You'd never get a cyanide leach pit three miles upstream from Apache Junction, Arizona. It's out of the question. But they shut it down and Goldfield became a ghost town. 1,500 people, number of fine businesses, everything gone. Clay, as the legend goes, the mammoth mine closed because it, it got flooded. But you, uh, you have the real story. Could you share it with us? There is a story that's been told so many times it's achieved a life of its own that the last shift at the Mammoth Mine, the miners drilled, loaded the holes, spit the fuse, left the mine, and blasted. And when they came to work the next morning, they had blasted into an underground river Three miles of underground workings were filled with water and water was running out the portal. The story gets even bigger. They put six six-inch steam pumps on it, pumped for 30 days and couldn't lower the water level. Now that's a beautiful story except for one thing, it never happened. The written record shows four years after they had shut down the Mammoth Mine it had filled up to the 400-foot level. That never happened. But you hear it on the, the mine tour over at Goldfield. It's been repeated so many times. It's got a mine, a, 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 achieved a, a mine of its own, but it never happened. So where does Goldfield Ghost Town come into all of this? So Goldfield became a ghost town and what's left of Goldfield today is Goldfield Ghost Town, which is developed as a, a tourist attraction. And to me that's interesting because of all the western themed towns in Arizona, Goldfield Ghost Town is the only one that's an actual reconstruction on the original site. Apache Land, uh, Calico, uh, Old Tucson, all built at random locations. But here at Goldfield, we've got some actual history. So between Goldfield Ghost Town, Bluebird Mine, and uh, the gift shop and uh, snack bar there, that's really Goldfield today. But those of us that live here, you know, we take our mail out of Apache Junction. We lost our post office once in 1897, got it back, lost it again in 1927. But, and we take our mail out of Apache Junction, and we're proud of Apache Junction, really, we're proud of it. But dang it, this to us is Goldfield. This is not Apache Junction. This is Goldfield, Arizona. We're kind of proud of it. Well, thanks for joining us for another special episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And we'd like to thank Clay Wurst, the owner of the Wasp Mine, who knows everything about this area. And he's going to be sharing more stories with us, sharing more of the mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.